Right, hi, year 11. Uh, this is the first lesson, all the key points that you need to know. So this lesson is about photosynthesis. Uh, where does photosynthesis happen? It happens in the leaf, uh, more specifically in the leaf cells, more specifically in the chloroplasts. Um, chloroplasts. Uh, and there's a chemical in chloroplasts called chlorophyll, which absorbs light and it uses that energy to take um, reactants and turn them into products. Right, so where it happens, it happens in leaf cells. Um, we also need to understand the, the reaction itself. So carbon dioxide, water, glucose, and oxygen. Um, we need to know the, the symbols for these. So the chemical formula for carbon dioxide is CO2, water is H2O, glucose is C, 6 H 12 O 6 and oxygen is O2 and we then need to be able to balance it um, and the key to balancing it is the number 6 so glucose has 6 carbons in and everything else has 6 of these so if you don't believe us so we can count the oxygens for example so 6 times 2 on this side plus 6 oxygens there would balance six oxygens here plus six times two there. So we could expand that, but obviously six times two balances that, that balances that. So that is the balanced symbol equation. So then we can think about um, the last chemistry topic we did um, about endothermic and exothermic reactions. So would there be more energy stored in the bonds of the reactants or of the products? There will be more energy stored in, in the products. So what this graph would look like would be this, and it would need to take that energy in from uh, outside. So that energy basically is transferred from sunlight. So the energy change, um, that is uh, where they get sunlight from, and that sunlight energy is stored in the bonds of the products, so glucose and oxygen. And um, plants can't store oxygen in their tissue so they just release it it diffuses into the atmosphere but they do store glucose as starch and they can use that energy later on for example at night time when they need to release more energy in respiration so photosynthesis is endothermic it is taking energy from its surroundings and it gets that energy from light and it stores that energy in the bonds of the products and the next thing that we need to think about, the next separate thing that we're going to think about is where do the plants get the things it needs to do photosynthesis from? So that is carbon dioxide, water, and light. So we'll know that light is um, taken in by uh, chlorophyll, which is in chloroplasts, which are part of leaf cells. S um, plants get water from roots, and it's transferred from the roots to the leaf um, in specialized cells called xylem and these are like little tubes which run from the roots all the way up the stem into the leaf cells so that it's transported by the xylem and we're going to look at um, how water is transported through the plant in another lesson so the main thing that we need to understand this lesson is how plants get in carbon dioxide and to understand that we need to first understand the structure of the leaf which is here so the structure of the leaf so this is if we imagine um a leaf being like this sort of shape uh, on its side it would look really flat like that um, and the, the stem would like from the side would look like that i guess and um, this is like if we cut a cross section through the side of the leaf so it would be really thin and these are obviously the size of cells so they're, they're really really small but this is um, what a leaf would look like, and we need to know the, the general layers and why they have them layers. So the first thing is, so water is obviously very, very important to plants. Plants need a lot of water. And the first layer, it's called the, the waxy cuticle. And the point of the waxy cuticle is it keeps water in. So it keeps water in the plant or it stops water evaporating is probably a better way to say that. So it stops water just evaporating out of the plant 
keeps the water in the plant. Right, next layer. I'm going to ignore the upper epidermis. Right, the, this important layer is called the palisade layer. And the palisade layer is full of specialised cells called palisade cells, which themselves are full of chloroplasts. So this layer is where the most photosynthesis happens. So photosynthesis is happening here. Um, the rest of the leaf is basically designed to support this layer. So leaves, their job is to take in sunlight and make glucose. Um, they're like little son solar panels of a plant. Um, and the rest of the, the cells in this cross section of the leaf are to support and give the reactants to that part of the leaf. So what you would have uh, next to this would be like the xylem cells. So the xylem might be down here and that's going to give water, uh, which is, uh, remember, one of the reactants for photosynthesis. So the next bit is how it gets um, carbon dioxide. Right, one thing to remember is we have lungs that um, do gas exchange. So our lungs take in oxygen from the air and they give carbon dioxide that is transported in the blood and they get rid of that carbon dioxide. What the lungs do is, to us, they increase the surface area between the air and our blood. So you can think about it as, so blood, it carries oxygen around. The air has got oxygen in it. And what the lungs do is they basically increase the size of this barrier between the air and the, in the blood. Um, so you might know a fact that, like, the air, air sacs have got, like the lungs have got these little things called alveoli in, and if we folded out all the alveoli, our lungs would have a surface area like the size of a football pitch. So what the leaf does, this next part of the leaf also increases the surface area of the leaf um, for gas exchange. So plants during the daytime don't need carbon dioxide, sorry, don't need oxygen, they do need carbon dioxide. And what this layer is called is, you can call it the spongy layer, but if you're doing A-level biology, this is called the spongy mesophyll layer, which sounds very complicated, but it's just a fancy word for like the middle layer. So this is called the spongy mesophyll layer, and it's got air spaces in it. And what that does is, if it was just the palisade layer, at the bottom of the leaf. I'm gonna clear this drawing because it's a bit busy, isn't it? If it was just this layer, then carbon dioxide could get in there and there and there. But because it's a spongy layer, basically there's gaps around all these cells. So what happens is carbon dioxide can also get in there and there and there, and they can feed the carbon dioxide through into that layer. So the spongy layer increases the surface area so more carbon dioxide can get into the palisade layer so there's more um, more photosynthesis can happen so just a little recap on the over the um, reaction of photosynthesis plants take carbon dioxide and water they then use light energy so light it's not plus light energy because it's not a, it's just energy it's not an uh, like something you could find on the periodic table or something like that it's just energy but carbon dioxide plus water uses light energy to make the products glucose and oxygen right where does it get carbon dioxide through the spongy layer and um, but the leaf basically takes in carbon dioxide specifically the spongy layer where does it get water from the root where does it get light from? So that palisade layer. There we go. Right. Plants make glucose and they make oxygen. So why do plants need glucose? So um, they can store energy with glucose. So it they can get energy from sunlight uh, during the day. But at night time, they can use that glucose and do respiration to create more energy. And they can also store the glucose as starch. So things like potatoes, rice, pasta, I've got starch in. That is made out of glucose. I remember from the first biology topic that 
starch is broken down in our bodies by amylase in saliva so they can store energy with glucose they also um, make cellulose not cellulose so that's the thing that cell walls are made out of so without making glucose they couldn't plants couldn't have cell walls and they also make like the other kind of food groups so fats for example have got glycerol in fatty acids and glycerol and the glycerol is just made from glucose it's um the, there's a chemical reaction happening that changes the glucose into glycerol so from that glucose the plants like make other things such as proteins fats and cellulose which is used as, as um cell walls